everyone and welcome to the bottom line live i've got people joining on zoom i've got people on facebook live um tonight we are going to talk about of course my favorite subject all of your favorite subject which is why you're here on a thursday night at 7 p.m eastern is we're going to talk about bookkeeping and we're going to talk about if you just started a company, what are the things that you need to know? What are the things that you need to do? So that's what we're going to talk about. And I'm going to make sure that this is working correctly and Facebook and all the places that it needs to be. Okay, good. Looks like it is. Good. So you just started a company. Now what? Now what? You want to know what you should do. And I know this is like a very kind of scary time because I've done this. Um, some of you have done it. Some of you are doing it. Some of you have done it more than once. So you just started a company and you are, you know, whether, you know, there could be different places that you're at. Maybe you haven't really made any money yet. You just have it an idea phase and you're wondering, should you go get an LLC? Should you get a bank account? Should you get an EIN? What should you do? So I want to, um, I want to come in and tell you that it's all going to be okay. It doesn't have to be that scary. You know, I am here to give you peace of mind. I know a lot of people come to me and basically tell me they have analysis paralysis. They want to start a company. They're in different phases. They want to start a company. They don't know what they should do. What type of company should they start? They just started a company. They want to make sure that they're doing everything by the book. They haven't made any money yet. Should they open an LLC? What do they need to do? It's it's very scary. It's, it makes you uh, stressed out. It makes you feel like it's really hard to move forward. So I want to I wanted to tell you that it doesn't have to be stressful. You can follow a very simple plan and it'll get you to where you wanna be. And the first step of this very simple plan is make some money. It seems like that should go without saying, but sometimes it feels like it's hard to start making some money because you don't know all of these different rules and you wanna make sure you're not breaking any rules. So I just wanna say that the IRS cannot tax you. Your state cannot tax you. Nobody can tax you if you're not making any money. So that is the first thing that you need to do. You, once you've figured out your product, you've figured out your idea, whether it's an Amazon company, a service company, an e-commerce company, uh, anything. That lots. I have friends starting all kinds of companies and they're fascinating. I have a friend that bought a construction company, you know, and he's much, much, much younger than I am and making way more money than me. And I'm like, where, why, where was I at that age? Who was I hanging out with? My friends didn't own multi-million dollar companies at that age, you know? So, um, you know, they do now, but I'm still trying to catch up to them. But you can't get taxed. You can't get any penalties. Nothing can happen if you don't make money. So that's got to be your first priority. You have to figure out how to make that money. So you start the company, you have the idea, okay, what do you need to make money? Do you need a website? Probably not, not if it's, uh, depending on the type of company it is, some type of companies you do need a website. I know CPAs who don't have websites, you know? So it really just depends on what type of company it is. If it's an Amazon company, do you need a website? No, you just need a product on Amazon. If it's a um, service-based company, if you are doing lawn mowing or something, do you need a, web, a website? Probably not. But what do you need? You need customers, you need clients, or you need investors if you're going that route, right? Like I'm not, I'm not saying you can either bootstrap it, you can get investors, whatever you want. But either way, you start making a revenue. Even on an investor income, you can't get taxed. It's not income, it's an investment, right? So you can only get taxed there's nothing to worry about, IRS, nothing, until you are making money. All right, let me just check in here. Does anybody have any questions for me of all of my words of wisdom so far of me saying, okay, good, let's make some money. Perfect. So now let's say you're making money. You got to the point where your idea is making money. You have some clients, you have some customers, there's income coming in. Now what? 
Should you be an LLC? Should you be an S Corp? What should you do? So first of all, let's talk about the difference between those two entities. So an LLC, uh, the limited liability company, is a legal protection. So if you're starting to make money, yeah, you might want an LLC for legal protection. It creates, it makes it so that your company is separate from you as an individual. But even then, you don't have to create an LLC. If you have a company and you've made a few thousand dollars, do you, do you have to start an LLC? No. If you want that legal protection, absolutely do it. If your company, and some people call start a company different phases, if your company is making 100000 in revenue, at that point, you definitely want an LLC for the legal protection, and you want to elect that LLC to be taxed as an S corp. If you are just making a few thousand dollars, $10,000, $20,000 for the whole year, um, I mean, you're not, nobody's, you know, likely to even notice you yet. So is it important to have that legal protection? Not really. It's a good idea, but if you are bootstrapping it, meaning, you know, you're paying for everything as you go, you don't have to have that legal protection as you get bigger. Absolutely. If you want to have legal protection, it's not a bad idea. It's going to cost you. You can go to, you know, we can do it for you. You can go to legal shield. You can go to whatever, all these different you know, quick and easy things, and it'll cost you a few hundred dollars to set up an LLC. So if you have a few hundred dollars that you can use to set it up, go ahead and do it. Otherwise, you are a company. As soon as you start selling a service or a product, even if it's on your own name and your own social security number, you are considered a sole proprietor and you have a company report it, you know, on your income taxes as Schedule C income with your regular tax return. Even if you have an LLC and you're not elected to be taxed as an S Corp, same thing. It's taxed in the same way. It's not a tax status. Once you're making, let's say, 100,000 revenue, you want to be elected to be taxed as an S Corp. An S Corp gives you tax savings. Why does it give you tax savings? Because probably because wealthy Americans made loopholes with the IRS. But basically, the way that it works is there are rules as an S Corp. So you have to have payroll. As a business owner, you have to be on payroll, on salary. So you're paying those taxes, right? But your payroll or salary only has to be a reasonable salary. So if you made 100,000 and your profit's 50,000, you know, a reasonable salary, it's probably 20, 30,000. And the rest of that money is going to be an owner's draw or, a shareholder distribution, right? Depending on how you go about it. And that is not going to be taxed um, as self-employment income or payroll. So you're only going to get the income tax on that. Whereas if you're an LLC that isn't taxed as an S Corp um, or you're a sole prop, sole proprietor, it's all taxed as self-employment income and it's taxed a lot more. So that's why you save money by being uh, elected to be taxed as an S Corp. Okay, so that's one aspect to keep in mind. But realistically, no one can tax you. No one can do anything. No one can say anything if you're not making money. So that has to, has to be your first goal before you start setting up legal entities and protections and these kinds of things. Unless you know you're going to, you know, you're making, you have it all worked out and this is your fifth company and you're going to have all this money in two minutes, like, yeah. But if you're just starting out and it's going to be a slow growth, then just figure out how to make your money. You know, it's your first company, you're learning, you're growing, make that money. Okay, good. Now, should you have a separate bank account for your business? Pop quiz. Oh, I have a microphone here. It's attached to this thing. Pop quiz. Should you have a separate bank account? The answer is yes. 100% yes. Always yes. You need a separate bank account for your business and your personal. Now, if you have a sole proprietorship and you're using your social security number instead of getting a tax ID number separately with an LLC or uh, a DBA, which stands for doing business as, like license or whatever, registration, right? You can just open a separate personal account and use it only for business. 
Is it better to have a business account? Yeah, for sure. But if you can't open a business account because you don't have a registered business yet and you still need to keep your money separate, open a second personal account and just use it for business. All right, just checking in here. Any questions? Does anybody have any? Okay, good. No questions yet. There are no stupid questions. So if you do have any questions, type them in the chat and I will 100% answer them. Good. So you have, why do you need a separate bank account? First of all, whether you have an LLC or an S Corp or whether you just are an individual that you just started your company, you need to know what your numbers are to be able to make any decisions about anything. I was actually talking to a business coach. I'm probably going to have him on my next webinar. He was telling me he has so many clients that he talks to that he can't coach them because they don't have any numbers. And he basically, the first thing he has to do with them is figure out their books. How can you make any decisions if you don't know your numbers? Also, in order to be able to report your taxes, in order to be able to do all of that stuff, you have to have numbers. You're not going to get numbers if you have to sit, well, you can, but it's going to be a lot of hard work. If you have to sit down and go through your bank statement that has all of your groceries and credit card payments and your kid's school and, you know, the kid's dance classes and some business expenses, it's going to be very, very difficult to come through there and get what you need out of it. So if you open that separate bank account and you can just start with one separate bank account and get a debit card for it and a checkbook for it if you need it and just use that for all the business expenses. And I have separate webinars that I've done and I'll do more webinars that'll talk about what are the different business expenses, what are tax deductions that you can have because especially when you're starting out there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of things that you're doing for your business. You've got home office expenses, you've got marketing promotion, taking clients out for dinner, you know, all different kinds of things. So all of those things need to be tracked in that separate account. The separate account will save you heartache and heartbreak and time and energy and stress later. Okay, the next thing you need is bookkeeping. I would start with QuickBooks Online. If you have a very small company, you know, you're just starting out like we're talking about, there's a version of QuickBooks Online called Simple Start. You don't want the self-employed. The self-employed is for like, if you just have an Etsy company or something, it's like a hobby company. We're not talking about hobby companies. We're talking about a real company that you're going to do and make money with, right? So you want a, you want software to be able to use we're going to use QuickBooks Online. It's out of all the software I've tried. It's my favorite one. And you want to just start with Simple Start. It's the most inexpensive. It's probably 25 bucks a month. And it keeps everything separate for you. If you're just starting out and you're not making money yet, don't worry about getting the bookkeeping software because you don't need it. If you don't have 25 bucks a month to spend on bookkeeping software, you don't need it yet. But once you're making money, this $25 a month is going to be one of your best investments. So you definitely want to do that. Now, you can start out just connecting the software to your bank account. So you just have all of the transactions downloading in there. Then you're going to have to go through and categorize it. But at that point, you have options. You can either go do, um, you know, some bookkeeping classes on YouTube or whatever, or reach out to a bookkeeper, pay for an hour or two of training. You know, I do a consultation where I'll sit down with you and teach you how to do the bookkeeping for your company. Just what you need to know. You don't need to know everything about QuickBooks in order to use it for yourself. But there's not, this is not the history of QuickBooks, right? This is how do I use this for my company to be organized. Go through it every day for five minutes or at least every week for a half an hour and just categorize it. So that way you have records and you know what's happening and you don't get to the end of the year and pull your hair out because that's not fun. Then as you get bigger and you have money to afford to pay someone else to do your bookkeeping, then you do that. Everything that you pay for as a business owner is an investment. It's what can I invest in that will make me more money? 
So if you're starting out and you're small and it's not a good investment of your money to hire someone to help you, that's totally understandable. There will come a point where your time is more valuable than just doing this bookkeeping. And it'll come probably faster than you expect. Also, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of people kind of hate bookkeeping. I love it. That's why I own a bookkeeping firm and a financial education company teaching people about accounting and bookkeeping. But most people hate it and it stresses them out. All right, good. Do we have any questions here? No, we don't. Good. Well, I'm glad that you guys are, are sticking with me. Okay. What is the next thing to know? So let's say you've grown your company, you are making $100,000, you just started, you know, you left to be taxes and S Corp, you need to have bookkeeping. And now what else do you need to have? You need to have payroll. So how do you set up payroll? Each state is different. I recommend getting some help. If you are, um, you know, in Florida or Texas, it's relatively simple and you can probably call the state and get registered for all the things. But if you need any help, we can always help set you up on payroll as well. Uh, but that is the next thing to know. Now, you need to, as soon as, I recommend as soon as you have a business and you're actually making money to hire a CPA. It's no longer a good idea to just do your own taxes because there's more to know. Then when you're making even more money than that, now you need tax planning. And all of these things hinge on having really good books. So that's kind of where you want to go, right? And let's say you have your one bank account and you're starting to make more money. You're going to want to open more bank accounts to keep your money organized. You also, you'll, at this point, you're going, to, you're going to have a tax ID so you can open business accounts. You know, you can move stuff over. It doesn't mess up your, you know, your books, your QuickBooks. You just open a new account. If you have any money in the old account, transfer it over and now you use your new account. But the main thing you're going to want to have is an income account. The income account is where all of your money goes and it sits there until you do a budget or a financial plan and transfer it out. Where do you transfer it out to? So you're going to have other accounts set up. Um, you're going to have a payroll account potentially and a, you know an operations account. Uh, reserves account. So, but you have to plan it all so that you are putting it all where it goes. And like, if you've ever read The Richest Man in Babylon, which is one of my favorite books, you know that you have to have your money for reserves and a tax reserve because it just comes, people don't set aside money for it. And at the end of the year, they get a tax bill and they're not expecting it. So you want to make sure you have reserves. You want to get to where you have six months of reserves and you want to have a tax reserve. That's very important. How much should you put in your tax reserves? I would check with your CPA on a specific amount, but 10 to 15% of your revenue is not a bad idea. What's the worst that can happen? You have money that you don't end up needing for taxes and you can invest it in something else. All right, so I've kind of taken you through uh, a basic lineup of all the different things that you need to do when you just start your company from a bookkeeping and a financial perspective. And uh, my company helps companies of all different sizes, you know, whether they are just starting out and they need, uh, you know, a consultation on how to use QuickBooks to companies that are six to 15 million revenue that we are doing weekly bookkeeping for them, paying their bills and doing their payroll. And even if you have a type of company that isn't our industries that we help, I have a lot of referrals. I can help you, you know, send you to someone who can help you. So please do not hesitate to reach out. My mission statement is, or for my company, is complete and perfect financial records for the business owner's peace of mind. That's what I want to make sure. That's what I really want to make sure that every business owner has is peace of mind. My personal purpose is helping business owners succeed. I think that that helps, you know, your community, your family, the entire U.S. economy. It's important that we all are there and able to help each other. That is my purpose. That's what I want to accomplish. So if you have any questions or you need any help, regardless of if you need bookkeeping or if you just need, you know, a referral to someone or want to get some a consultation or anything that you need help on, setting up your LLC, setting up payroll, we can help you with all that. 
feel free to reach out. You can comment here. You can comment on Facebook. You can send me an email, maya at solvencynow.com. You can go to my website, solvencynow.com. We are on LinkedIn under Maya Winder and Solvency Now. LinkedIn just shut down my LinkedIn, so I had to start a new one. In case you're wondering why you don't see me, we're going to send you a new invitation. Um, on Instagram under Solvency Now, Facebook under Maya Winder or Solvency Now. I always answer all of my messages. So please don't hesitate to reach out if you do need any help. And I hope this was able to help you. And if you are in this position where you have analysis paralysis or you just started your company and you weren't sure what to do, I hope this helped you. Thank you so much. And I will see you all next week, same time, 7 p.m. Eastern for the bottom, not, bottom line live on Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.